In this video, I'm going to talk about interrupts, but I'm not going to include timers. That will be in a separate video. So I'm just going to talk about the, the general concepts of timers, but it's specifically related to the AVR and uh, specifically the AppMega 328P. So let's have a look at uh, the slides that we've got here from uh, the authors of this book, Matsi, Nahimi and Nahimi. So let's have a look further. So in this uh, video, I'm going to talk quickly about uh, polling versus interrupt, uh, interrupt service routines for the different interrupts, the steps in executing an interrupt, edge trigger versus level trigger uh, interrupts, interrupt priority, although we're not going to change a lot on interrupt priority, I prefer it to stay as it is, and uh, also maybe briefly interrupt inside an interrupt, again, um, this is looking for trouble, so rather stay away from that. Um, and also specifically in, in this specific video, I'm going to talk about how to implement it in C programming. So let's look at the next slide. So the first two concepts we must just talk about is polling. Now the problem with polling is, like in this specific program here, this, this program here it's waiting um, uh, if this pin D2 is a zero, you'll be sitting inside this loop here and nothing will happen. Um, you can't do anything else. And this is the problem with the polling. It ties the CPU down. Whereas if we start making use of an interrupt, it's a very efficient use of a CPU. Um, it has priority. In other words, as soon as uh, the interrupt uh, needs to be serviced, it will the microcontroller will jump there and it will execute that specific task. And it can be masked, it can be masked, meaning that uh, you can activate certain interrupts or deactivate them or deactivate everyone, so it is possible. So normally you would be doing a specific task here and when, uh, when the pin is zero, you will do something only when the pin PD2 becomes a zero. So this is a, a much more efficient way to work in uh, microcontrollers by to make use of interrupts. So for instance, there's a few peripherals here, timers, input outputs, UR, SPI, I2C, you can see there's a lot to follow there, ADCs, etc. So if any one of these peripherals needs to be uh, activated, it will go through the interrupt controller. Let's say it's a, it's a UR that needs an interrupt. Um, it will go through the interrupt controller and the CPU will then address uh, that specific UART, uh, the interrupt service routine. So please remember this name also, interrupt service routine. Now what we have is, if, if you look at uh, the interrupt vectors uh, in this at mega328, you can see that uh, the reset vector starts at address 0000, zero, zero, zero. so it's actually, uh, and also we look at the next one because one is not used. So reset is actually for from 0000 up to 0001. Um, so it's actually, in this case, it's two bytes, two bytes here, plus the other two, which is not shown, which is four bytes for an interrupt vector or, a, and an, in or an interrupt vector address. It's the same thing. So for external interrupts, you actually have address 0002 and 03. For external interrupt 1, you've got 4 and 5 and so forth. So there are certain interrupts that you can see. There's external interrupts, there's pin change interrupts, uh, there's a watchdog timer interrupt, there's counter interrupts, etc. If I can just scroll up, <coughs> sorry, a little bit, you've also got your SPI, UART, ADC, EEPROM, etc. So <coughs> the interrupt steps works as follow first of all um, and you'll see it in my next slide now that this is happening it says uh, it will finish an instruction uh, plus save the next instruction address maybe i should go to the next slide and then come back to this one so if you look at this as i've said your interrupt table or your ve interrupt vector addresses is actually from 0000 up to a maximum of 0032 now uh, this, it's, this is sitting inside your flash program memory and it sits right at the top of your flash program memory. Um, and because it's only, as we've seen already, a specific vector address is actually only four bytes long. 
so that four bytes in that four bytes you cannot really uh, write a big program and this is why what will happen in an interrupt let's just before we 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 go here uh, or let me rather say you will have interrupt service routines let's say for an adc or a timer or an io each and every one of them will have its own interrupt service routine isr um, so we will write this interrupt service routines here you can also actually write this interrupt service routines uh, after the uh, well after the main file you can also do that outside the main file at the bottom of your program it doesn't really matter where you place it i personally prefer to place it at the front or the top of the main uh, program so you've got your your main program inside at the start of your main you will activate your interrupts and this is your while one it each and every program will always have this while one and you'll have some statements here so let's assume <coughs> let's go back to an example of an adc for instance as soon as the adc is finished um, you will activate it and tell it to run and uh, while if you if you've acted activated that maybe the first statement says um, uh, read the adc or start the conversion of the adc and then at some point when you can carry on with your main program at some point if that conversion is finished what will happen is let's assume we're sitting here at statement number three you will jump out and you will then direct be directed because i'm talking about adc i've mentioned the adc uh, you will then go to the interrupt vector address to the specific um, vector address of the adc just want to go back quickly and see yeah here it is so in other words you will actually jump to the adc conversion complete to this address this is where the address will take you to um, and at this address because as i've said uh, that vector address where you direct it to is only four bytes you can't really write a program in there but what you can do is to say in your program is to say but let us jump to interrupt service routine number two which could maybe for for instance um, handle the adc once it's act, uh, it's completed with the interrupt uh, you can get the, the data from that uh, adc and this will be done in this interrupt service routine so you can be directed from the vector interrupt table or the vector addresses and then go and execute your program here and once you've finished here what will happen is you will then jump back remember we jumped out of statement number three and once you've finished here you will jump into statement number four which is the one following number three and this is what's extremely nice about an interrupt so if you get interrupted somewhere in your program you will jump out go to the interrupt vector address that will direct you to the interrupt service routine and once you're finished you will just continue with your program uh, after well the, the the statement after will be the one that you left out of your program with um, so for a short du duration you will go into your interrupt service routine and then carry on with your main program and this is what makes this thing so beautiful so if we go back to the interrupt steps again as i've said you finish an instruction and what will happen automatically it will save the next address instruction address and in, in, in the in my case yeah it will actually save statement number four uh, the address of statement number four this is what it means so uh, when going or well, you, then you'll jump to the interrupt service routine we've seen how that will happen you first go to the vector table and then to the interrupt service routine and it talks about you will clear an interrupt flag <coughs> automatically i will talk about that clearing the flag automatically just after this um, when going into the interrupt service routine the i bit there's an int uh, yeah well there's a, a main interrupt bit of s reg is cleared thus no more interrupts i will talk about this so what this actually means is there's a specific register it's a called a status register and the bit number seven in the status register is this i bit um, so this i bit will be set you'll have to set this bit to activate the interrupts but later in this uh, video i will talk about that um, but when you go into the interrupt service routine as it says this bit is clear the reason for that is uh, if you go into the interrupt service routine you do not want to be ac uh, activated or you do not want to be interrupted by another interrupt service routine and this is why this bit is actually switching off or this bit is switched off automatically so you don't need to worry about that thus no more interrupts can handle while you are busy doing an interrupt service routine 
then it says the ex interrupt service routine is executed and the moment that it's finished there with the execution the i bit of that s register will be set it will be made a one and automatically your interrupts will be in enabled then again um, and your return address is collected from the stack as i've said you save at the top here we said the microcontroller will save in, in, in my example, I will finish instruction, it will finish instru or statement number three, and it will save the address of number four of what I've, what I've explained before. And now it will return, in my case, to statement number four uh, after collecting it from the stack. Uh, and then it will continue with the main program. So this is the steps of an interrupt. And I have just tried to, to add this picture. So if you jump out of statement number three here, Statement number four's address will be, s will be saved. You will go into the interrupt vector where you will be directed to your interrupt service routine, whichever one it was activated. And from there, you will go back to statement number four by collecting from the stack the address of near where you need to go to. So uh, quite nice arrangement how interrupt steps are working. Now you, you've got different interrupt sources. We've saw that already before they they talk about timers here i'm not going to expl explicitly describe timers in this specific uh, video it uh, it will become uh, too much so i'm not going to do that but there are different inter interrupts like timers external interrupt pin changes uh, uart interrupt spis etc and everything that you see here um, can interrupt it can be an interrupt source let's go to the next slide um, at startup, no interrupt will be enabled. So in other words, you can, if, if you start with a normal program, all interrupts are disabled. So you can't, cannot get interrupted. It must be enabled individually, where whatever is needed, it, you must do that. And again, bit number D7, which is the uh, I bit in the status register, is the global interrupt enabled bit. It's like a main switch in the house. So if the main switch in the house is off, you cannot do anything nothing but nothing works in your house the same with this if the main bit which is i is actually zero the global interrupt will be off and nothing will work so if you want anything to work this bit must be a one i am going to break this up in a in a, another video so i'm going to stop here and in my video number two i will carry on with this video just to to ensure that the, this uh, video doesn't become too long so i'm going to carry on in video number two Thank you.